Hello everyone, welcome to today's Monday Rapid Fire. Let's get straight in because the markets are moving. I want to get to the Bitcoin chart as soon as possible. Let's just have a quick look at some of the uh, larger news items today. So BP Harris has finally said something about uh, crypto and AI, which is fantastic. Still a, a little bit light on substance, but there really hasn't been much substance at all when it comes to crypto. But the statement alone uh, helps us you know, confirm the thesis that this administration will be just like Biden's administration where we've got the, the Bitcoin ETF, the Ethereum ETF, put Warren and Co aside. Uh, just, it seems like crypto is eating the US government from the inside out. More lobbyists, uh, more politicians that are crypto friendly. So if they just maintain the status quo another four years, look, if, if she wins, uh, it's not going to kill crypto at all. In fact, whoever wins, uh, it means rate cuts, means more liquidity, more debt. Bitcoin and crypto are going to absolutely love that. So I wanted to bring this to your attention. And finally, a little bit of good news, uh, but I'm a big believer in uh, you know actions over words and I still haven't seen any actions. She's vice president currently. She can do a lot uh, from her position right now and has done nothing. So I remember politicians say a lot of things, but um, the proof is in the pudding. All right, let's move on over to Bitcoin. Uh, yeah, it, it looks really, really close, guys, that we're, um, uh, we're going to punch to the top of this range and really feel out that kind of region and uh, look, hopefully launch us into the bull market we want to see uh, historically, cyclically from around this point. So uh, I'm monitoring it as well uh, on that cycle map that I put together for the masterminds. And uh, yeah, we're, we're tracking almost barely for four years. So it's absolutely wild. Now let's just go to the weekly first. I wanted to show you this. Uh, this close above the 21 um, is big for me. Um, I think the bigger, um, you know, shorter to midterm indicator is though the nearing close above the 200 day moving average. So uh, again, big bold candle up here, but what we want to create above the 200 day moving average, and I'll show you where that is in a sec, is just a higher high above this previous sort of block here. We've created our first um, uh, higher low situation, higher low structure through here. Uh, and I want to see this higher high begin to form where we can just move into this, this top site, which would be fantastic. Now, it, we probably will stay up there for a little bit and contend with that 70,000 region once again, uh, but there will be a, a rather large significant disbelief in the market around that area. So uh, I think we will have the fuel to continue to move higher. But once we get into these overhead regions, supply is going to come in and they're going to try and sell on top of your heads. Uh, but, uh, you know, I think this last, what have we had? One, two, three, four, five. This would be the six. If we can, you know, crack this, create this sort of shorter term uh, high high that would be enormous but we really want to get above you know that 70,000 we get above 70,000 you know we're off to the moon we're in the new bull bull phase you know old coins are already kind of showing us there's a new energy new buoyancy in the market uh, after the rate cuts uh, but we really want to see it uh, objectively shown as well in the technicals because the technical will tell us kind of what's going on um, behind the scenes but it does look like the strong bull divergence is playing out through here and that should launch just to the top of the range which would be absolutely amazing but you can see it is red 200 day moving average we are just smacking into it again and again there is obviously room for us to pull back to maybe 62,000 whatnot we did already try that twice so these two wicks uh, but it doesn't mean we can't you know come through here get a big wick reject it and come down fake everyone out again yeah you know, it's crypto but we want to see some conclusive closes above that region but guys i think this might be this might be time this might be time that uh, we'll have to wait otherwise if we get rejected here it's just another lower high i'm coming down into this region again so i wanted to share that uh nice uptick in sbtc actually here uh starting to look better again i'm not really interested in sbtc until we see conclusive and constructive high 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 low uh movements there uh, i'll get into some other charts in a sec but i wanted to just share uh the absolute runner of this point in the cycle and I want to be clear, momentum begets momentum, strength begets strength. When you see relative strength and it's super, super strong, you just have to pay attention to it because others are. It means so much in this market. So SUI, TBL's going off the chain. Someone knows something. I think validators are loading up absolutely for whatever's coming. Uh, but the chart here tells you everything you want to know on the weekly. This is enormous. This is a huge move. So massive token unlock and now with essentially no more apart from a, a staggered release over the next 10 years. But this is huge. This is momentum. This is strength. This is what you want to see. And it's beating not only USD, it's beating Bitcoin, it's beating Solana, it's beating Ethereum. So it's got the, the trifecta and that's why it's so important. Because you can see it beating USD, but maybe, you know, it's not really performing too well against Bitcoin. Well, oh boy, it really is as well. And I'll show you that in a sec. Uh, but this year, massive weekly close. I can't really see this not making you all time high, you know, over the next few weeks. If everything goes 
uh, you know, the same way. I do have a bit of a squiggle here, a bit of sideways movement, which I'd love to see a consolidation in this uh, volume pocket for further move, but we could just keep blitzing up. That's fine. Still got a lot of room, a lot of the uh, momentum in the case in the RSIs. Um, but again, he, he, we really, and I've said this with the masterminds today as well, we get too much depth here. Um, but we need to have a an evolving approach to how we view the RSI. When the RSI is in these top regions, uh, it's not even here yet, but if we go, and this is against Bitcoin, you can see just how bullish this looks, broken the downtrend number. It. But if we, um, we need to start to think when the RSI is in these upward regions, like Sui is now, all this means is bulls are in control. The buyers are really, really strong. That is what you want to see in an uptrending bull market. You want to see strength. That's what attracts you to these cryptos, attracts you to these prices. It's meandering as low as below 50, hasn't had a breakout yet. So why do you want to be in it? If it's not breaking Bitcoin, unless it's a longer term strategy, period investment thesis, obviously that's fine. But if you are sort of in a short midterm mindset and you look at well, how can I capture outside returns? Looking at something like Sui, I'm not saying go all in now because it's going to be you know, it's going to be some pullbacks along the way. But I'm just framing it like this: that when the RSI is in these levels, that is a good sign. You want, if this is moving up higher and doing the staircase where it has a run up, has the consolidation, you know, pullback, and then the next explosion higher. What you want to see in the RSI is us going up to 82, 90, and then having a pullback to the 70 on the RSI, and then bounce back into those high areas. At the same with price, it's finding that strength, finding the dip buys, and moving a higher. You, you just Seeing you know, in these over overbought points and thinking, oh, this is where I need to sell my entire stack. That's not the right mindset to have in a bull market. I can tell you that from experience. You, you kind of, the recency bias in the bear market, you see in these overbought areas and you go, I'm going to need to sell everything. Well, that might be the right move in the short term. You might see a pullback of maybe 10, you know, 15%. All that matters at that point is, that, is making sure you're buying those dips. If you're not, then you're essentially just selling your position, taking risk off that, that's fine. But you might be missing a much larger move. So it's important not to be reactionary. And then you might be chasing it um, after that point. Again, you've got to factor in a lot of things. I just wanted to bring that to your attention. But uh, yeah, beating Bitcoin, you know, likely pullback on the cards, but reloading for a short amount of time and probably going higher. Because as this ball goes on, you want to be very, uh, you want to be paying attention to what is running really, really hard. That, that aggressiveness, that momentum, that liquidity, it's coming for a reason. It's going somewhere because someone knows something. Um, and you want to pay attention to those early runners because they'll likely run middle, the back end as well. Uh, okay, um, others that I just wanted to show you was FET. just looks phenomenal. And I think the importance of just going back to basics, looking at the resistance support, finding new high highs, higher lows. That is it. That is it. And it's how I've just been looking at the markets of late and it has just been beautiful because you're you're being patient, you're waiting for the market to come to you. And FET here, yeah, made this you know, inverse head and shoulders. But what I wanted to see was a break above this um, prior resistance level. As soon as it closed with volume above it, I mean, happy days. You know, And it's creating this um, higher, high, higher, low structure of a new uptrend. So it's probably going to run into the 200 here. You have a pullback here to 150, 140, and then kick in off to the races. So closing above this level is so consequential. Resistance flip now, support, confirmation of a new uptrend. Yeah, you know, it, it's it's just a real thing of beauty to see. And of course, it's beating Bitcoin. So you can kind of use all these charts to your advantage and think about it in those terms. Um, there's lots of other charts that I'm watching, um, Solana, Dogecoin, uh, AVAX breaking out against Bitcoin now as well. So a lot of these charts have had so much um, downtrend bearishness for so long you're paying attention some of them are providing incredible entries and great weekly closes out of seriously long-term downtrends so i'm paying attention guys because this might be the turn of the tide so have a great day we'll catch you again next time bye bye